Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Oh, you would not believe what I've just done. Um, I just spent 10 minutes chatting away, um, reading off my notes, uh, and then suddenly realised that I'd not actually started to record. <laughs> Heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, it don't bode well for the rest of it, but let's see how we go. Uh, not a good start though. Uh, I'll, I'll begin with a couple of comments on uh, last week's video. Um, which I really appreciate. Uh, Rick, old AF, another great roundup, Tony. I've not seen the clip of Winnie the Pooh, so I'll check it out. You need to. Um, Rick, this, this movie is right up your street. Um, if you enjoyed Banana Splits, which I haven't seen yet, um, Winnie the Pooh is going to be a perfect fit for you, I think. Um, awesome as always, buddy. Cheers, Rick. Uh, Scott, excellent video, Tony. Really enjoyed it, mate. Uh, Dario Argento's Suspiria is actually my favourite of his, to be fair. Um, I love that movie. We were talking about um, Dario Argento movies, I think, last week. Um, I have seen the original Suspiria, but a long, long time ago. It was actually on VHS, I think. Um, that shows how long ago it was. Really, really enjoyed it. Sort of a loud, bright, colourful, blood-splattered affair. Uh, but really good. Um, so I do need to re-watch that at some point. Um, I believe it's streaming on Shudder at the moment, or BFI. Um, I've heard not that many good things about the remake or reboot um have you seen it scott is it worth a look um somehow i don't think i'm going to bother with it but we'll, we'll see what you say whether you've watched it and whether you uh, think it's worth a go uh, so thanks for those comments guys really appreciate it um yesterday uh i posted my first ever Saturday review video and you guys really seem to have enjoyed it um, I'm so grateful for all the lovely comments that you've you've published on this because I wasn't sure how it would look I recorded it uh, the week before last um, and scheduled it to drop obviously yesterday at nine o'clock but I didn't actually get a chance to watch it back um, normally before I actually publish a video I'll watch it and just make sure um, that everything's sort of tickety-boo um, but I didn't get a chance with that one, so I was a little bit nervous of it dropping and what it would actually look like. Uh, but watching it back yesterday and reading your lovely comments, I didn't really have anything to worry about, as per usual. Um, let's see what I've got here. Uh, Chris, uh, great video. Loved seeing what you've watched and purchased. It increases my watch list and knowledge exponentially. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Oh God, I'm putting a strain on your wallet again, mate, and now I am, but you do it to me as well. Uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, Mark, love the video, Tony. A monthly review is definitely something we can all look forward to. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, Guy, great stuff, mate. Well worth the wait. Um, although I disagree with you about Indy, Crystal Skull is good, but not a patch on Last Crusade. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, talking about the, obviously, the box set collection. Um, that I watched and basically I tried, I tried to sort of put them in some sort of an order. Now, um, as far as I was concerned, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a total classic. It, it will never be better. So obviously that was number one. Temple of Doom came a close second. Um, and there was a slight little bit of controversy about putting Last Crusade behind um, Crystal Skull. Um, all I can say is I hadn't seen Crystal Skull for such a long time, but I do remember not really enjoying it that much. Um, this time round, I really, really enjoyed it, um, and I enjoyed it, I think, slightly more than Last Crusade, which is why I put it behind that one. Um, but as I said yesterday, it could all change. In a couple of years, um, I could probably watch them again, and um, Last Crusade will regain its third place. So <laughs> we'll see on that one. Um, Steve. Uh, McCartney, really enjoyed your video, Tony. Uh, cheers, mate. Much appreciated. Um, we were talking about Marathon Man. I'm holding on as Kino Lorber will be releasing the 4K of Marathon Man next month. Uh, they've recently released Death Wish. Um, Marathon Man, um, I was in HMV, as you know, while I was off work. Uh, they got a deal on two for 25 quid Blu-rays. I picked three that I definitely wanted and couldn't decide on a fourth. Um, and I kept coming back to Marathon Man and I thought, oh, just do it. Um, got home and a couple of days later, there it was, Kino Lorber releasing Marathon Man on 4K uh, sometime in April, I think. Um, so if I'd have known that before, I, I think I'd have held off. As for Death Wish, um, you have said that it's not a massive improvement picture-wise. Um, 
but there is a difference so I don't know um, I'm tempted to get that and I'll tell you for why because I'm, I'm fairly sure it will be unrated or uncut uh, so that will be worth it'll be worth getting that just for the fact that you'll be getting a, a completely uncut version of it so thanks for that Steve um, Jason our very own ginger ninja uh, nice one Tony love those box sets all classics they certainly are um, as I said before my only regret is that it's taken me so long to actually get the damn things watched um, I've still got lots of movies on my shelf that I look at most weeks and think why have you not watched that it's been out like 30 years and I will get round to them um, but uh, it's just it, it's getting round to it the, the one I'm working on at the moment is the Rocky box set to answer your question Jason um, I've watched Rocky 1 to 5 I'm coming on to Rocky Balboa which is the last one in that particular Blu-ray box set and then I've got to decide whether to move on to Creed um, I'm very tempted to do that uh, picking the Blu-rays up one at a time because I believe you can get them now for about eight pounds um, probably less if you buy them second hand um, so it, it will be a shame not to complete the story kind of thing um, but yes I am dangerously close to finishing the uh, the Rocky box set Jay so we're rest assured with that one um, Rick uh, you like Love Thy Neighbour right that's it I'm boycotting your channel I'm going to have you cancelled oh for fuck's sake you know what I read the top half of that and just for a brief second thought you were serious I thought oh shit what have I done um, and then I realised you were joking <laughs> Yes, I do love Love Line A, but I absolutely adore it. I can't help it. I just, I love that kind of humour. It, it's the era I was brought up in. Um, Jason, you'll bear me out on this. You're not from that era, but you love that kind of comedy. So you, you totally get where I'm coming from with that. Um, Mike, the real fifth Beatle. Great show tone. Love Thy Neighbour was well written and hilarious. Yes, there was offensive language, but the joke was on Eddie, who was always made to look the fool. A good point. Well made, Mike. Um... Never ever did Eddie come out on top in any of these arguments, fracas, fights or anything like that. He never came out on top. He always came out basically looking a complete bloody idiot, which he was. Um, but so well played. Um, I watched a series, well a programme, a long time ago uh, where they interviewed a lot of black people about programmes that they watched and Love Thy Neighbour came up and um, one lady said that her mother as soon as she heard the theme tune the, t the TV went off she would not allow them to watch it at all um, so it's, it's a very divisive program a very divisive movie but I love it I absolutely love it so uh, um, stay tuned uh, Mike because I've got uh, something for you a little bit later on right next to me now um, <clears throat> what have I got here Jason <laughs> straight to the point as always uh, great vid mate, I thought Fury Road was shite <laughs> tried twice to watch it and never got to the end <laughs> blunt as ever straight to the point um, Fury Road was okay, it was alright um, I have been advised by Chris to watch uh, let me get this right, the black and chrome version because it adds something to the actual movie um, now if it's on the blu-ray um, I will have a look and see what I think not really sure what it's going to do but he says it will probably sway me into um, the thought that it is actually not bad but I'll, I'll see how I go with that one not not sure I could sit through it again just yet but um, the, uh, the the seed has been planted the thought is there so I'll, I'll look into that one um, right Callie and Guy that was one brilliant video let me just move my notes up a bit <laughs> here we go brilliant video uh, by the way you interviewed Eric and Julia Lewald um, who were paramount in creating and writing X-Men the animated series what a brilliant interview I believe it took you about a year to set that up and I'm not surprised but a very very entertaining video um, and this is coming from somebody who's never seen an X-Men movie I never saw uh, X-Men the animated series but I came to the end of that and thought I really want to have a look at this because they are so passionate about it um, and that is partly what swayed me to uh, subscribe to Disney Plus apart from all the Star Wars and the Marvel content on there um, I found out that X-Men the animated series is actually on there 
Um, I've watched one episode, loved it, absolutely loved it. There are so many 80s Marvel superhero cartoons that I didn't uh, get to see. I didn't realise there were so many of them. The Incredible Hulk, there's loads of them. So I'm going to be working my way through those, but a cracking video, guys. Very, very entertaining. I think out of all the videos you've done, I think that's probably my favourite. And I've never seen an episode of... Uh, X-Men, the animated series, until last week. So, um, Callie, you went to Burton, what is it, Burton Sci-Fi and Fantasy Con. Looks like you had an absolute hoot. Um, it looked great. Um, I didn't even realise it was happening. I, I remember reading something about it, oh, months ago on Facebook. Um, I've never been to a Comic Con, Comic Con before. I know they hold them in Birmingham and they're massive, massive affairs. Um, but I didn't realise that it... Uh, that it was happening in Burton as well. Obviously, it's a much smaller thing because it's at Burton Library, but you certainly look like you had a good time. Um, let's see. You also put a post on last week about one of your videos. Uh, last week, we had the amazing opportunity to interview X-Men runners, writers, Eric and Julia LeWald. This episode has reached only 38 views and only three comments. I did some digging on YouTube, the bits on the IC, and I've noticed something odd. For the last few months, every single one of our vids, one, two, or even three dislikes. No comments, though. So what I'm wondering is, why dislike our content without saying why? Please could everybody remember to hit the like button and give me a thumbs up. Oh, that's my note. <laughs> Sorry. It's an interesting point. Um, I don't go into the analytics, as I've said before, because I'm not really, not really that interested. But... Um, what I would say, which is pretty much what I say at the end of every video, of every video if you have enjoyed the content, um, just hit the like button. Um, obviously, subscribe if you like what I do. Uh, share it if you want to. But most importantly, and I didn't realise that YouTube, it's something to do with um, algorithms or something like that. Uh, but the more actual likes that your video gets, um, the more eyes are going to be on it. So, I mean, all I would say is if you do enjoy the video, just hit the like. I know most of you do, um, and I get so many comments, um, so I don't need to remind you about that one. Um, but it's an interesting point, Kelly. I, I, it's something I probably need to look into, sort of the technical side of it, but it, it, I spend too much time just writing these things, let alone <laughs> going into all that. Plus, as I say, I'm a little bit afraid of what I'm going to see. Um, I know you did it once before and it turned out that a lot of people were only watching your videos for two minutes and then turning off. I really don't want to know that. <laughs> I definitely don't need to do that. Um, but yeah, again, a good point well made. Um, let's see. Jason, your Saturday afternoon matinee. I'm all right, Jack. What a classic. Peter Sellers. Um, obviously, this is from the days when trade unions ruled the country, pretty much. Um, so yeah, a cracking movie. I've seen it two or three times, really enjoyed it. Ian Carmichael, I believe, is in that as well. And you also put a post on about spider movies. Uh, let's see, uh, Sting and Arachnophobia remake, a new spider movie in production. So with this and Arachnophobia coming out, looks like we're in for a treat and I bloody hate spiders. <laughs> so do I, I absolutely loathe them. I'm scared to death of them. Uh, Jason Kerr, uh, our Ginger Ninja replied, and it's Aussie too. <clears throat> and you know we have the best spiders down here. Yes, we know you do. <laughs> You've got massive ones and poisonous ones, and oh god, no, I don't. Um, no, I, I don't think Australia is the place for me. Um, Jason, apparently you've got cousins down there who keep asking you to go over and stay with them for a while, and you keep politely putting them off. Totally with you on that. Completely. <laughs> so, Dave Lowe. Um, we were talking in the car park at work this week about Straw Dogs. You haven't seen it yet, um, but I, I would highly recommend it. I'm due to give it a rewatch any time now, um, but I would definitely, definitely recommend Straw Dogs. It is a cracking movie, controversial as hell, um, still controversial now. It was pushing buttons back in 1971 um, when it first came out, but it would, it would definitely, definitely push buttons now um, so yeah I'd recommend you have a look at that and I'd be very very curious to know uh, sort of what you think of it um, and on the subject of controversial movies you mentioned a film called The Girl Next Door this was recommended to me many many years ago as a kind of a thriller 
that's a little bit shocking. I watched it and it was absolutely one of the most horrible things I've ever seen. Um, I did confess that maybe I need to rewatch it to see whether it's as bad um, now as I remember it being, but it is a truly, truly awful movie. Um, has anybody seen it? It's to do, I, I only got a sort of a basic idea of this because it's a long time since I've seen it, uh, but holding a girl captive in a cellar, um, there's a lot of torture involved. It's not, it's not nice at all. It, it, it's one of those movies that when I saw it, um, sort of posters for it on the internet, and that, I thought it was going to be a, a kind of a TV movie, a kind of a very mild um, sort of thriller type of thing. Oh God, I couldn't have been more wrong. It is truly one of the most shocking movies I've ever seen. It's, I'm sure it's called The Girl Next Door. Um, but yeah, if you've not seen it, if you like things that really do push your buttons, I would de definitely give that a go. Um, and you asked me about um, maybe showing off my TV setup, my collections and stuff like that. I will be doing that, definitely. Um, I did mean to do that when I first got the TV and uh, the, um, the 4K player. Um, but I will be doing that for you, definitely. Um, and also showing off bits of uh, my collections over the weeks. Uh, Chris, your Sunday Western last week was Silverado never seen it it's another of those um vhs tapes that was consigned to the bottom shelf hardly ever seemed to move so i never bothered with it um but after your review last week i definitely do want to take a look at it um you also mentioned uh, a superman 4k 5 disc box set now these are the christopher reeve movie movies um at the time i've not looked since um i had no idea how much it was and as far as i could tell it wasn't on uh, amazon for pre-order uh, so i'd be very very curious to know um what the score is with it to me christopher reeve will always be superman there will be no other uh, no matter how many people play him henry cavill whoever um, christopher reeve will always be superman for me um, so i would be interested in that um, but only if there's a significant improvement in picture and sound quality i've got the blu-ray box set which i'm perfectly happy with um so yeah i'd be interested in that but only if um there's a significant uh, sort of improvement in uh, picture and sound um i loved the video you did by the way uh for rob's nostalgia project the silence of the lambs um i've asked rob if i'm too late to place an order for the straw dog set he replied to me last night and said absolutely not so i have ordered it um, I sent uh, the uh, the money via PayPal as you probably did um, and hopefully I'll be re receiving that soon um, so I'm really really looking forward to that um, judging by what you showed me on that video I'm going to be very very impressed with that um, Mark loved the indie trivia um, I remember that story very well I remember Steven Spielberg telling that story um, on an episode of the South Bank show many many years ago I think it was just after the movie came out um, and you're quite right Harrison Ford was very very ill um, got a really dicky tummy uh, that day um, he wasn't up to filming the entire scene um, the scene involved about six pages of uh, a very elaborate fight scene between him and this um, scimitar wielding Arab whatever he was um, and he couldn't do it so he said tell you what just, just pull your gun out and shoot him and that's exactly what he did and Spielberg said he was really pleased because he could just tear five pages out of the script throw it away and move on to the next bit so yeah I do remember that one that's probably my favorite uh, bit of trivia this week um, Dave Oliver loved your videos this week mate the fairy tale horror universe it's a cracking idea isn't it I do love the sound of it like you uh, we've got Winnie the Pooh blood and honey uh, to look forward to which is it's really really doing well at the box office at the moment you're right in saying it's not it's not going to turn up at smaller cinemas it really isn't so i think we've got to wait or the likes of us have got to wait until it comes out on blu-ray um, but there's a very very attractive looking um, package coming out with art cards and all sorts of things for that one I, i've not seen it on amazon yet but i have seen it advertised on facebook so that might be one to look forward to but this fairy tale universe, it's, it's sounding really interesting. Bambi, The Reckoning, like you say, how the hell are they going to do that? <laughs> I dread to think. Uh, what's the other one? Peter Pan Neverland Nightmare. As you say, the possibilities for that are endless. That could be really, really good. 
um, and Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 that, that sequel has already been greenlit they're, they're ready to go with it um, that's before the uh, the first one has finished its cinema run so yeah look forward to seeing that and I certainly look forward to seeing the uh, um, the original the first one so you did a video a video on John Wick 4 never seen one they don't really appeal to me it's, it's a kind of an action movie I guess I don't know um, it's, it's just never appealed to me so I can't really comment on the John Wick one but the Children of the Corn video that you did uh, the trailer reaction it looks amazing and it's on Shudder so we'll be able to get it on there uh, rather than uh, either getting it on download or bloody VHS or VHS DVD or Blu-ray so yeah I will be watching that one I know the original is the best the sequels weren't brilliant but I'm always curious to see what a reboot is going to look like uh, but that really does look impressive, so I'm going to be uh, um, taking a look at that. Uh, right, a few quick bits of news for you. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes has, uh, well, it's wrapped, filming, finished. Bloody hell, that was quick. I only remember reading about this a few weeks ago, and all of a sudden it's all finished. Um, so they churn them out so fast nowadays. It's not due to hit cinemas until mid-2024, uh, um, so don't get too excited just yet. But it, it just surprised me when I read that. I thought, Jesus Christ, that was fast. <laughs> so we got that to look forward to. Raquel Welsh uh, died this week, aged 82. We all knew Raquel Welsh. Uh, if you grew up in the 70s, um, her movies were always on TV. Uh, there was one called Fathom, um, which was always on ITV. Hanny Calder, that was quite a controversial, violent Western. Um, Fantastic Voyage. Uh, which is the one about the team that has shrunk down to the size of a pinhead and injected into the uh, the bloodstream of a man who was dying, uh, where, the, where, they were, um, uh, where they had to destroy a blood clot within his brain, I think. Uh, another classic sci-fi movie, but the one everybody remembers, One Million Years BC. What a movie. Uh, Ray Harryhausen's stop-motion dinosaurs, uh, Raquel Welsh, it doesn't get any better. Um, produced by Hammer as well um, so yeah that was a sad bit of news and the final bit Megan uh, yeah it was alright but apparently he's being screened on Peacock later this month in an unrated edition why um, the movie itself was alright um, being screened in an unrated version with a lot more gore and violence doesn't make me want to watch it again um, and everybody that I've seen that went to the cinema to see this has said basically the same as me that it was okay nothing special it was just all right um, so no I won't be uh, partaking in the uh, the unrated version of Megan <laughs> definitely not so and there were a couple of quotes here very quickly before I move on to the last bit I thought these were quite amusing there was one about Paddington 3 um, Paddington 3 will start shooting in 2023 and someone's replied I love these movies but I don't think giving him a gun is the right choice creatively <laughs> that made me smile and there was another one um, about Belfast saw Belfast at the weekend um, brilliant movie but very disappointed to find out it wasn't actually based on the Boney M song <laughs> seriously <laughs> I thought that was great right I'm going to put this cup down and I'm going to show what I bought this week. Uh, well, first off, new issue of Empire came out on Friday, so I'll definitely be having a read of that. I came across these on eBay, and I thought, wow, got to have those. Video Nasties, the definitive guide. This is something like 13 hours and 25 minutes spread over three discs, documentaries on uh, the Video Nasties list, all that kind of thing. Um, sort of trailers, introductions, that is going to be a brilliant watch. Also, there is a part two, which again is, let's see, five, eight, nine, that's about nearly, again, nearly 13 hours of material. Some other documentaries on there, some more introductions. That is going to be fascinating. I can't wait to take a look at that. And I saw this and thought, yeah, why not? Trash or Treasure, which I believe is the... Uh, Let's see, censorship and the changing meanings of the video nasties. That's one I need to have a read of. Um, that's going to be basically the history of what's in those videotapes. 
Navin. Mike, the real fifth beetle, this is for you. Um, you put out a request um, on your YouTube channel um, asking for suggestions on 60s and 70s horror movies uh, for a live stream. I think you're doing. I've got a few suggestions here. I was going to put it in the comments, but I thought, seeing as I'm here, I might as well do it this way. Here's a few that I would definitely recommend. Um, these are mostly 70s. First one is The Beast Must Die. This is a brilliant movie. Um, early 70s, probably about 71, 70. It was, oh, hang on, no, it wasn't. I think it was later than that. Let me just look. 1974. An absolutely amazing movie. It's like a horror movie crossed with a whodunit. Um, a lot of guests converge on an island um, and one of them is a werewolf. This is the only film that I know that has a werewolf break towards the end where you get to guess who the werewolf is. Very, very entertaining. Um, and also, in the 70s we had a lot of movies uh, coming obviously from the US. Um, they used to do double bills. Um, and this is one that I remember vividly going to see the car and it, it is basically a demonic car a car possessed by the devil basically killing people running them over plowing them down running them over cliffs very very entertaining and it was doubled up on a double bill with Day of the Animals I just remember going to see this so well this was when you could go into the cinema at about six o'clock and not come out until ten um, you got two movies for the price of one but both of these are absolutely brilliant American horror films um, next one Burnt Offerings the legend that was Oliver Reed uh, also Betty Davis, Karen Black in a brilliant haunted house movie uh, that predates the Amityville horror um, very very nasty in parts this was made about 1976 I believe uh, but that's highly recommended. And we have, let's see, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Amicus did a series of these. They called them portmanteau movies, anthology movies. Basically sort of three or four stories within one film. Um, all loosely based around um, a particular story. These were always brilliant. I love watching these. No matter how many times I see them, I never get bored of them. Um, there are many of these. These are two of my favourites. From Beyond the Grave is another. Uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. There were many of them. Um, and it's what Amicus Studios were famous for. So I'd recommend those as far as 70s go. And then we have um, what is known as the Holy Trinity of um, folk horror. We have... Blood on Satan's Claw. This is a really bizarre movie. Um, very, very controversial. It's got scenes in there that you definitely would not be able to um, produce today. Um, it's based on a book. Um, again, folk horror. Just superb. I haven't seen it for quite a while. This is one I need to revisit. This is one that I've seen many, many times. Witchfinder General caused some major problems with the censors when it came out. Um, they took out quite a bit of material which has now been reinserted and it's it's been categorised as an 18. Um, when you watch this you can tell the scenes uh, that have been re -put, well, sort of put back in um, because the quality is very different basically because they've been lying about on a cutting room floor for god knows how long. Um, but if you like violent films and films that cause problems with the censors that is definitely one to go for. And the final one, The Wicker Man, the classic The Wicker Man. Edward Woodward, um, as a uh, mainland policeman, is shipped off to an island up in uh, Scotland uh, to search for or to find out what happened to a missing girl. Um, brilliant movie, superb soundtrack an absolutely devastating ending um, you've probably seen most of these but I'm hoping that some of them you've not heard of um, and I've introduced you to a couple of new titles so they're my suggestions uh, for your 60s 70s um, live stream so right coming up to 30 minutes thanks ever so much for joining me folks um, if you've enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up uh, like share um, subscribe all that stuff 
Um, I'll be back again next week with more of the same. Um, have a brilliant weekend, folks. And once again, thanks very much for joining me. Have fun. Take care. Ta-da.